Good morning, everybody. Hey, I got some exciting stuff going in the shop, but first I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers. And if you're new here, thanks for stopping in. I appreciate each and every one of you. I am almost at 200 subscribers. I can't believe it. Um, so stay tuned um, in the next week or so for a little giveaway. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, but it is in the works. So stay tuned because I'll have a little bit of a giveaway for my 200 subscribers. Um, yeah. So, and if you're not a subscriber, I would appreciate you becoming one and um, stay in tune for all the exciting stuff I have lined up for the next year or so. Um, or at least the next six months anyway. Um, I've been planning and, and, and all of that. So anyway, but without further ado, let me get on to what I have available in the shop right now. And then I am going to do a little tutorial. Um, so stick with me until the end and we're going to do tutorial on a couple of exciting little kits that I have available. So let me move this aside and these go along with this over here, but let me get into these. So these are little kits that I have put together. Um, I'm gonna open one um, and show you. So I have three available. Um, one is already up on in my shop right now and the other two are not. So this is um, just a little kit I put together in case you, I mean, it's kind of a beginner kit. Oh, that was loud. I'm um, sorry. Um, it's kind of a beginner kit. Uh, or, you know, if you're seasoned and you just like the little golden books. So I put together three little golden books um, this weekend. And um, so they open up like this. And um, let me see if I can... Let me see if I can get this open. Here we go, there it is. Okay, so it opens like this, and then just pretty papers that I put together. Um, they are bound, ring bound, um, with just one inch binder rings, but you know, these can be, uh, you can put one and a half, you can put two, and really build it up and make these your own. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to flip through. Now they're all the same except for the book. And I'll show you the books I have available in the other ones. So this one is I Am a Princess. And it is all the princesses or many of the princesses. And um, this is copyrighted in 2012. So which I can't believe some of these princesses are from 2012 already. But um I think Tiana was the one that got me. I didn't think she was so long ago, but I guess she is. So this is just a little flip out and you can um, decide to glue it or not. Um, hopefully I'm in frame here. I'm gonna move this aside and make sure I am. So yeah, I just had some um, finds in my craft room and I thought that they would be so pretty in these little golden books. And um, I've had these little golden books sitting around for quite a while now since the fall and uh, I just haven't done anything with them and I thought you know what I just I need to do something with them um and I've been kind of in and out last week we were at the cabin for Valentine's Day and I wasn't able to do anything and I thought you know what I'm just going to throw these together so this is like I said this is the little golden book and it's got some mulberry paper in there and, um, like I said, just some, you know, I thought the birds and the birds went well. And, yeah, so this is what they look like. And they're just plain. And then they also have some coffee dyed paper in here, too. So, why is this not moving? Oh, there we go. Um, um, yeah, so, anyway, that's what they look like. And like I said, just mulberry paper. But let's get into the good stuff. So this is I Am a Princess. And then I also have um, 
What's the other one? I also have Sleeping Beauty. Um, and like I said, all the papers are the same and everything. So I'm not going to open these up. So I have Sleeping Beauty and I have, um, well, that one's Sleeping Beauty. This one is Sleeping Beauty and this one is Snow White. So I have I Am a Princess, Snow White, and Sleeping Beauty. And um, I will show you, I will open up one of these little kits and show you what's in here if I can. I think these, I'm going to have to, you know what, I am going to have to rip this open. I, I um, unfortunately, I sealed them before I did this video and I bought the cellophane bags that don't reseal, unfortunately. So I am going to waste the bag, but I'm not going to waste it because I will use the front as an acetate. So I will put that aside in my scrap bin. So that was kind of dumb of me to put that in there. But, you know, I've, I've done crazier things. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to show you what's in these little packs. I'm going to set this aside so I put that back together. So I have... Four um, ribbons, and they're about a, they're about twelve inches long, ten to twelve inches long of ribbon, and those are the ribbons you get, and then some um, rusted out paper clips. So there's the rusty paper clips that you get, and um, oh my goodness, I have to sneeze. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Hopefully that wasn't super loud. I apologize. Um, and then this is just some bling. And then you get um, four vintage or three vintage playing cards. And then, oh, another, another paper clip. And then you get um, three little coin envelopes. So they just open like that and you can decorate them however you want. And then two of these envelopes, which I thought were kind of cool. And I always put tags in these. I thought that that was cool. So you get three little coin envelopes and two of those envelopes. And then some tags. And I've sewed around some of them and left some of them blank. And some of them are, I think all of them are gessoed. So you can do whatever you would like with them. So you have these and all the ribbons and you can cut these tails if you want to. Um, so you got three sewed and three plain bigger ones. So they fit in there. And then you have some um, distressed uh, index cards. So you get four index cards. And then these are the off cuts to the paper. So there's three in there. And these may, obviously these are gonna vary from kit to kit, but uh, I think all of them, I think all of them have three. Don't quote me on that. Some of them may have two. It just depended on how much, oh, this one has four. So I think they either have three or four in them um, the other ones. And, um, so yeah, they're double-sided, so you can choose whichever side you want, and you can make pockets out of these, or whatever. And then these are the off-cuts, um, from the, uh, coffee dyed, and so you have some graph paper, and this is just the end of one of the vintage, um, coloring book pages so that's in there and then um three coffee dyed papers and then you have the off cuts of the other paper of the coffee paper that's in there with the with the um flowers and then you have a coloring book page um so this one i thought was pretty cool and uh yeah so you have a coloring book page and then you have um two or three um, pages of, you know, big pages in there. So that is what's in those kits. And like I said, I, I have um, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, 
And then I am a princess available. And like I said, Snow White and Sleeping Beauty, I'm not going to open. They're just the same. So this is this is what's in each kit. And um, so, yeah. And then I have a couple of more. I'm just going to clean this up and I'll show you what else I have. So I did all kits this week. I thought it would be fun for somebody to get a kit to do themselves. So let me put this aside with the princess one so I don't lose it. Um, and then I have um, recycled candle holders um, and I made bookbinding kits with them. So I have two available and um, I'll go over each one, what's in them. And then this, because it didn't fit in here and I couldn't figure out what else to do with it. So I just put a little um, piece of ribbon on the back of it and they just slide right in and out. So you got your big bone folder and your ruler in there. So let me um, put one aside. They're both the same. One is just a little bit shorter than the other, but everything in it is the same. So I'm going to put one aside and then I'm going to take these out. So you'll have this. And then what's in here is some needles, um, some curved needles and a leather thimble. And my son made these and these are so cute and they are going with the rest of what's in the kit. So these are just little book binding cradles that he made. I thought they were so cute. So that's included. And then you have an awl. So um, little pokey tool. So you have your awl. And then you have another leather um, thimble, just depending on what size your finger is. And then you have a pair of snips. So, and these might vary in each kit. I'm not sure. Um, the other one has, I think, a different kind of pair in there. And then you have another bone folder, which these are obviously not bone. Um, they're, not, they're not officially bone. And then you have two wax threads in here. Um, you know what? I'm just going to dump this, the rest of this. Actually, you have more than two wax threads in here. You have four wax threads. So you have a tan and a little bit more of a yellow tan. And then you have a white and you have a black and then you have two binder clips and you have the rest of your needles in here. So there's, I think, like seven or eight needles in here. And then one of these thimbles. Um, so that is what's in the book binding kit. Now let me see if I can get all this in here the same way it came out. Um, so those were in, these were in, these were in, these were in. And then the awl, and then the needles, and a pair of snips and your curved bone folder, and then the little book binding cradle, which I thought is so cute, but I'm gonna leave that out because I'm gonna show you what to do with it. And I don't have one for my personal stash yet. I told my son he needed to make one for me. Um, so I am, I'm, I'm, uh, this is my son who I moved out of the house a couple, a few weeks ago, probably a month ago now. And um, I'm going to visit him tomorrow. And I told him he better have one of these little binder, um, these little book binding cradles for me. So what goes along with the book binding kits are two kits of um, books. So of books you can bind together with your little binding machine or your little binding cradle. So this is what's in these kits. And notice I did not um, put these together. So you will get all of this to make your very own mini journal. So I got this paper the other day at um, Joanne and I thought it was really cute and if you don't know Joanne is having a huge 60% off sale on all of their um, paper pads. Um, so yeah, so run to Joanne and grab some paper pads. They're 60% off this week. Um, 
so I got these and this is just a little corner tuck and then you have a um, tag and you have these little tags and then you just have some off cuts of, you know, these can be used as uh, pockets. So you have this, and this was all in one paper pad. And I just thought it was such a pretty paper pad. And then you have some distressed index cards. And then these, and I actually saw this tutorial from Bonnie and Clive, and I'm gonna tag her because you can watch her tutorial on how she made these. And they're super cute. Um, so they have a pocket here. And they have a pocket here. And then they have a pocket here. And they're so simple to make. But I will tag her. And I will tag her video. And I'll link her video. So you can see how she put these together. And they're, like I said, they're super simple to make. And if you don't want to sew around them, basically you just glue. And they're, like I said, super simple to make. And then I made this. And you can make this into a tag. Or you can cut it. Or you, whatever you want to do with this. And this is just watercolored. Um, so it's book pages put together and just watercolored. And then I thought this was fun. I got dishes the other day or yesterday. As a matter of fact, I got a new set of dishes and this was in there. And I thought, oh my goodness, how fun is this corrugated cardboard? And then you have one large eight and a half by 11 sheet of this paper. And then you have a vintage, um, 1950s uh, dictionary page, which is super fragile. Um, and then comes the actual book. So I did, to save space, I did already um, fold these for you. So this is your cover. Okay, so it is a uh, Amazon packaging, and these make great covers. They're nice and sturdy. Um, so basically, all of these will go in your cover like so, you know, like this, and they're all folded for you. Um, so let me go through. These are some coffee dyed papers, and like I said, this is your cover. Um, so you can choose to cover it with whatever you want. And then um, I will show you the pages. So you have this page, more coffee dye. You have this page and you have this page. And I believe there should be one more of these. So let me, um, there will be one more coordinating piece in here. I thought for sure I had four pages, but I guess I don't. So you'll get one more um, coordinating page to go with this in this. So that is your book. And then you get, oh, here it is. I thought I had four. And then you'll get that. Um, and then you could just get some book pages. And then you get a little paper bag and what you do with these is just fold them up and they fit right there and they make a pocket and a pocket. If you want another pocket back there, you can have another pocket back there, but I'm gonna show you how to put this together today. Um, so that is the other kit. So let me just put it back together for you. And I am not going to show you how to decorate it because I want you guys to learn on your own. So like I said, this is a great beginner's kit. Um, and especially if you don't have any bookbinding tools yet, this is fantastic. So I'm going to put this back in here. So you will get a bookbinding kit. So you will get a book binding kit and you will get a book to bind um, in this um, Etsy, in my Etsy shop. Um, and uh, yeah, so I thought these were fun. So let me get these back and then I am going to show you. Um, let me put these aside so you can choose this one, which is kind of like a regular book and they're four by six books, just to let you know. So they are four by sixes. 
And then this one is exactly the same. It's just landscape. So it is landscape. So it goes like that. So that is the only difference between these two is that one is portrait and one is landscape. So I'm going to put these aside and you, you know, you'll, you'll be able to choose which one you get on in my Etsy listing. So here we go. So I am doing a portrait one and basically you'll get this. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out my fabrics and I think I'm going to use this one if it fits. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope this one fits. Um, I believe it does. I believe I have just enough fabric for this. I do. So I have just enough. So basically you're going to get some fabric or whatever you want to cover your cover with. And so, um, yeah. So let me think. Let me think now. Yeah. So we're going to have to glue it. So basically, I'm going to take some fabric tack. Maybe. Maybe I'm going to take some fabric tack. And I am going to put it all over. So I love these little books. They're so fun and they are fun for, you know, who loves them are my niece who is, um, she's seven. She'll be eight in June. She'll be eight in June and she loves these little books. And I usually make like fairy, little fairy books for her. Um, and she actually does use them, which I was really, I was kind of not sure if she would use them or not. So I'm going to put that right in the middle. Um, plunk it down. So I think I got that sort of, not, uh, not really. And Fabri-Tac is forgiving for a little bit. So I'm going to make that even and I'm going to plug it down like this. And then I am going to snip the corners. So what you're going to want to do is snip the corners on these and you just go, I just go like this and snip the edges. Okay. Snip, snip, snip. And I might have to snip these edges a little bit more. And I usually save these for clusters. Um, so yeah, I save those for clusters. But yeah, these little books are cute for, I don't know, little purse things or I just, I don't know. I think everything's better in miniature. I do. I don't know. I'm, I'm kooky like that. I really do think everything's better smaller. Um, so anyway, and then you're going to take your fabric tack like this and your fabric tack like this on the corners and make sure you get the corners really well. And I am just doing this because off camera, I think I'm going to, so I do the edges, I do the top and bottom first, and then I'm going to flip it over and do the top. I think I, I did. I got that. Let's see. I'm going to pull it. That's a little crooked on that one. We're going to do this. And then we are going to fold it in like this. And then what I'm going to do is take it to my sewing machine and I am going to sew around the edges of this. So I will be right back.
Oh my God, you are so lucky that I did not do that on camera. So I sewed for like here and here, no bobbin, none, no bobbin. So then I put the bobbin in and of course I put the bobbin in wrong. And yeah, so then I had a hot mess on my hands and I had to like, uh, I had to undo it and redo it and, um, and then the cat wanted food, you know, it's nine o'clock. So, um, it's food time for Leonidas and Miss Penelope. So, um, they were bugging me. So then we went out food time. So, you know, now it's nine o'clock when I started, it was like eight forty-five. So 15 minutes later. Okay. So I am going to use this pretty yellow on here. And the reason I didn't sew this was because I have noticed, um, and this might be just me, and if somebody knows, they can um, chime in on this. But basically, when I sew a piece of paper to a piece of cloth, it never works out. I don't know why. I always get buckles and all of this. So... I tend not to sew paper to fabric to, you know, um, a liner. So I am going to glue it. And I think what I'm going to do is fold it how I want to fold it, like so. And I notice my cover is a little crooked. Um, I think I think the covers that are in the kits are straighter than this one. Um, so yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now try to get this fold straight right here. So these bags, I will tell you, are, you know, when you fold them and stuff, they do get a little wrinkly. I don't mind that. Um, if you mind that, then you might want to use something else as your cover. Um, but yeah, I don't mind the wrinkle because once you get your paper and your fabric and everything else on it, it honestly doesn't even show most of the time. So basically what I'm going to do is put my Fabri-Tac all over this and I do use Fabri-Tac for this even though it's paper um because it's obviously right here is fabric and it just holds a little bit better for the cover and I do use quite a bit um and then I take my little spatula and I spread it out um so that it gets nice and spread all over. And you do have a little bit of time, like I said, to work with the Fabri-Tac. Um, if you're using another kind of glue, like art glitter glue, um, you don't have a lot of time to work with it. But um, like I said, Fabri-Tac you do. So I am going to, let's see, put this in the middle, like so. And then I'm going to do one side and press down really well. Okay. Press, press, press. And you might even want to get your scraping tool and press, press, press. I'm going to move this down a little bit if I have time. Okay. So we're going to press, 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 press. And then I'm going to do this. I am going to match this one to this only because if you try to do it when it's flat I have noticed that that's when you get a buckle in it okay so now you can do this and push that into the center push it really good into the center crease and then push it flat and this is, like I said, this is my, um, my cover is a little wonky. So even though this paper is straight, this is a little wonky. 
I don't mind. It's a junk journal. That's what you get. But um, I think, hopefully, the ones that are in the kit are a little more straight than this. So I'm just going to take that and I am going to cut without cutting my fabric. There. So there's that. And then, like I said, it's a little, little wonky, but, you know, I'm a little wonky too. So, all right. There we go. And then I'm just going to make sure everything is glued down really well. Um, really, really well. Oh my God, my purse is sitting on the floor of my craft room and it's black. And I swear it was Leo. I was like, oh my God, Leo, what do you want now? And that funny poor guy, he's always getting in trouble. He's always getting in trouble. Okay, so now we have a nice little cover. So I think I actually may include some fabric in these kits so that you can uh, do a cover of your own. So let's see, what do I have here? So let's pick out some coordinating. And like I said, everything you get in the kit is coordinating. I do think that that's cute. Actually, do I like the strawberries or do I, I think I like that one because the yellow is picking it up and I'm going to choose, um, I'm going to choose this because it's got some pink in it and I am definitely going to choose that one. And then, I don't know, I think I want the strawberries. I think I do want the strawberries. Let's see, do I like that? Yeah, I think so. The pink and the pink. All right. I'm committing. I'm doing the strawberries. That's the end of it. And we're going to put that aside. So basically, you're just going to fold these in half. And they're all seven and three quarters by six. So that they fit in our journals. And then I am going to take my folder. I have to remember when I use this one to make sure it doesn't have, I use this for my glue and, um, but I honestly can't find my bone folder right now. Um, it is buried under this pile of stuff on my desk. My next video, um, is going to be Fabulous Finds Fridays. I did go to the thrift store this week and, Got a couple of things, and I did get some things I will show you from Joanne's sale. Um, and what else did we get? Oh, I went to Dollar Tree. So I went to Dollar Tree, and um, not super exciting stuff at Dollar Tree. Just a couple of things. Um, but anyway, yeah. That will be Friday's video, will be um, Fabulous Finds. I said I wasn't going to um, spend money, but um, I did get a little, I did get a little spending money, so of course I spent it. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so we're folding these, so I know it's boring to watch me fold these, and I should have had these done. But I wanted to show you kind of how easy it is to put a little, one of these little journals together. And they're so much fun to work with. Um, like I said, I just, I just love them. I love doing these little mini journals. They're quick and they're easy and um, you don't need to spend a lot of time on them. Um, and they're a good way to practice. If you're a beginner, these are a really good way to get your feet wet on a journal without committing to a large journal. So I am going to put a coffee dye and a coffee dye. And I'm going to start with this one because I think it's beautiful so we are perfect and perfect and then another coffee dye and another coffee dye and then we're going to use the black one 
Let's see. Oh, it goes this way. Ha! Ha ha! And then we are going to use another coffee die. And we are going to use this one. And then another coffee die. And then this one. So this one's going to be pretty chunky. Um, and like I said, you don't have to use all the pages in the kit for pages in your journal. So this is what it's going to look like. And then you have the clamps in your kit here. Um, I am not going to use those. I am going to use, um, where are my clamps? Sorry for reaching in front of you. Okay. So I'm going to get my Dollar Tree clips out. These are fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to clip it and I'm going to make sure it's straight. And oh, Leonidas hair, of course. There's always Leonidas hair. He is a big floof ball. And I swear I call vacuum 5,000 times. I do. I vacuum twice a day. I vacuum in the morning from the night before and I vacuum before I go to bed because he's just this floofy beast. He is floofy. And Miss Penny, even though she's a short hair, she is black and white and I tend to wear a lot of black clothes. And I noticed last night that... Now she's out of her kitten phase. She is starting to shed more. So anyway. Okay. So we have this. And then you're going to get your little book binding cradle. And it actually fits really well. Now you do have to move it up and down. But that's okay. So we do this. And then we're going to get my folder. And I'm just going to eyeball it. I, I really am. I don't, um, I don't measure. I do it this way. I feel like it's just as okay. Just as okay. Does that make sense? Anyway, I feel like it's okay to do it this way too. So we have that and then we're just going to move it up a little bit and we're going to eyeball it again and I'm going to do it right there. Okay, that is in. And then because this is fabric, you kind of can't see it too well. So I do this outside of the book cradle and I do push it through just a little bit more um, because I want those holes in the fabric to be visible. Okay, so there you have that. I'm gonna put that aside so I don't cut poke myself and I'm going to put these aside. So that's the little book binding cradle. It works great. Works just like the big one. We do have same thing in the big ones available in the shop too. So we have these mini ones in the book binding kits and then we have these as a separate purchase and um, they're not in the shop right now because I do not have them in my hands, in my possession yet. So when I get them in my possession, they will be up in the shop and they are 3D printed by my son. So then you're just gonna measure one, two, and three and cut it right there, okay? And let me put that back so I don't lose my needle. Okay. So then, oh, no. Ha ha. I need my needle. Oh, my goodness, Elizabeth. Not enough coffee today, I guess. I do have my coffee next to me. I didn't show you today. but So now here's the decision that you need to make. If you go through this hole first, if you go through the outside in, your, um, you can make a bow on the outside and it can be, um, pretty, it can be decorative. You can make a little bow or if you go on the inside out, it's going to be held together and in the inside, does that make sense? 
am I making sense? So basically, if you go this way, you can tie it in a bow or you can tie it in a knot, but you can tie it because you're going to come out. You're going to go in and you're going to come back out this hole and you're going to tie it so it seals it all together. So I think I'm going to do that. So it goes in like so. And of course, I am not making, well, maybe I'm going in this way. All right. I'm going in this way. Going in from the outside in is really difficult. Um, so, especially through fabric. So, I'm just going to go through the inside. And then you're going to hold your tail. Okay. And then you do have to go in this way and see if I can get it. All right, I'm going to unhold my tail. There we go. Okay, so we got it through the hole up here. Hold your tail, okay, and then pull it. And sometimes I do have to use a pair of pliers to get it through. And then you're gonna go back in this hole. Okay, this is called a three hole pamphlet stitch. There is five hole pamphlet stitch. I have yet to try that. Um, I, I don't know, it intimidates me. I always do the three hole one. So I think I'm gonna have to branch out a little bit and maybe try a five hole one with one of my bigger journals. Um, but this one, obviously these little journals, three holes is just enough. I mean, I'm trying to make my tail a little bit bigger and I can't grab it. Oh my goodness, Elizabeth, there we go. So I'm gonna try to make my tail just a hair bit bigger. And I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to pull. Okay. And then we go back through here and try not to split your thread, which I did. So I'm going to go back out and then you're going to go on the opposite side. Oh, and I'm still splitting my thread. Okay. There we go. Not split my thread and on the other side, and through and then this is your choice on whether you want to tie a bow or whether you want to tie a knot and I am just going to tie a knot because I didn't leave enough string to tie a bow so you go over and under you just tie a square knot and make sure it is tight which it is and then I'm going to go the opposite way which is like this and through this way. Through that. Oh my goodness. Oh, fumble today. Fumble, fumble, fumble. Okay. And there you go. And then this is your choice. So now these are done. So now it's all you're done. And now, this is preference. This is personal, personal preference. And you guys need to decide what style journals you want, what's good for you. I don't mind a little bit sticking out. I think it adds to the flavor, I guess. Is the, I'm not sure the right word there. Um, it adds to your journal a little bit. But if you're putting tabs in, you probably want these cut down a little bit. And what happens is, and what happened with this one is that they were all cut to the same length. But when you start putting them together, they grow. So just the middle grows a little bit. So like I said, personal preference before you sew it in, so you put them all together and before it's sewed in, you're gonna take a straight edge and you're gonna cut them even. So that will be even for you. Now, I'm not gonna put any tabs on this one, so I don't mind it being like this. Um, you can also, if you want, um, when you are putting your journal together, if you decide to sew on it right here, and right here, you can decide to sew a ribbon in that goes all the way around, or you can just sew ribbons in here. 
um, to tie it closed. So um, anyway, I am not going to show you that today. Um, there are other, there are plenty of other videos on closures and everything. And if I can find a good one, I'll link it below. Um, usually what I do is, and I'm probably going to do it. I have a piece right here. I'm probably just going to tie a ribbon around it. Um, like so. And that way there, the person, recipient of this little journal can decide whether they want to um, stitch it on or not. So there you go. And just your closure like that and tie it in a bow and all that. Well, what I really wanted to show you was how to use your small book binding cradle. How to use your small book binding cradle in your book binding kit and what the kit will look like when it's put together. So if you stayed with me for this long, I appreciate it. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like my videos, then think about subscribing because I would love to have you aboard. Um, I think that's it for now. Oh, oh, I know. You can leave these long and you can put like a bead or something on here or you can choose to snip them and I am going to snip them. So don't snip them super close to the knot, but like, right, like so. So you have still a little tiny tail left and that way there it won't come out. And if you feel like it, you can put a dot of glue there too if you want and just glue it down. I've done that before. So yeah. So anyway, thanks for stopping by and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.